Is it a Mark 12? No, it's not a Mark 12, but guess what? I'm gonna call it a f***ing modern day Mark 12. Hi guys and gals, this is Alex Costa from a and Design. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Type A Rifle Company SPR. This is a 15.1 inch short barreled rifle with an Allen Engineering style muzzle device and collar. We will be shooting the beautiful Otter Creek OCM5 that we uh, were able to acquire from TAG Firearms, TAG Firearms. And this is a pretty sweet, nifty little setup. Very operator. So I have this 15.1 inch SBR configured for use with a CNV DLR night vision module. It's an L3 Harris clip-on night vision that I think it's like 2800 FOM, 2750. And I acquired it from ET Gear Co. down in Taylor, Texas. So the reason why I have nothing on the top part of this quad rail is so that I can mount, you can see the witness marks from where I clamp it. Um, but I clamp my CNV DLR on here and this is my Coyote and Pig 556 gun. So I have a Steiner D-ball on this side. Uh, I will be getting rid of the Steiner D-ball because the illuminator on the Steiner D-Ball is booty. When looking through the CNV DLR under night vision with the Steiner illuminator, uh, it sucks. I have a Mod Light OKW uh, 18650 on here. I'm running it on a Mod Button light, and then I have a ramped Mod Button light for the Steiner with a crane connector in the back. And I'm running it here on the side between my Picatinny mount QD cup, so I know which one's laser and which one's light. It's in a good position as well. I am running a Harris bipod from LaRue, so it has the LaRue quick clamp on it, and I made sure it's on the same side that my CNV DLR has its clamp. Always put your clamps on the same side. Uh, easy to adjust toggle to tighten the Harris bipod. These are one of the, the Harris legs where it has the actual slotted uh, legs, super easy to deploy. And I have a little pick, um, little paracord 550 pull here for a quick deploy of the bipod itself. So this is a really ideal setup for the bipod. Um, bipod location on the rail, I don't run it all the way at the front. If you're shooting uphill and you might be proned out in a decline position, uh, having your rail, uh, having your bipod mounted all the way to the front of the rail will pose issues for yourself. You always wanna put your bipod in a location that is also accessible to you. So if you are in the prone position and you need to reach up and adjust the lengths of your bipod or even just accessing your quick pull for it, you put it in a position that you can also reach. If you run it too far forward and then you do have to adjust and like myself, I have a pretty long length of pull uh, behind glass. The farther it is away from you, the harder it is to manipulate when you're in uh, unconventional shooting positions as well as the prone. Moving forward, this is the OCM can. This is Otter Creek's version of a Allen Engineering uh, suppressor. It's a little bit lighter weight. I think from what I was told, the Allen suppressors have a slightly tighter inside diameter than the uh, Otter Creek. But other than that, it's a lighter weight can by a couple ounces and it's pretty affordable, actually. We have a Neomag Sentry Strap that keeps our a &R Design Link Sling in place. I do have a Arca to pick a tinny mount here. I love Arca mounts. I will show you how we run our tripods and what tripod I do run for this setup. I did have to shop around. I couldn't tell you what company this is. I bought like four or five of them off Amazon to figure out which one fits best in the Really Right Stuff Ascent Arca ball head. I love the Ascent, super lightweight tripod, and we'll look at it in a second, but the clamping on the head, it's its a very specific Arca. I had to shop around basically to find an Arca that fit the best in it, and this is the one that did. I am waiting for Annex Defense to release their Arca to Picatinny, because Annex makes the best M-Lock Arca mountable rails on the market. Moving rearward on the platform, this is a Badger Ordnance Condition 1 mount. I really like it. I'm running a Night Force Attacker 1 to 8. This is my favorite, absolute 
favorite LPVO. It's got a true one power, absolutely bomb proof, immaculate optic. I greatly prefer it over like the Vortex. The eye box is good on it. Pretty much everything's great about it. I'm running it at a 154 height because the CNV DLR L3 clip on night vision is an absolute witness ride height. Uh, clip on night vision. I'm running the Aimpoint T2 on the Condition 1 diving board. Some common complaints about the Condition 1 diving boards are the ride height is a little high, but when you're running something like a Night Force, the top of the turret cap here is perfectly in line at the bottom of the tube of the Aimpoint T2 in this position. So you're not getting part of your field of view shadowed by this. The other thing you need to note is when you're running a CNV DLR clip-on night vision or a clip-on thermal, the rubber um, foreskin that you roll over the end of the optic, it needs a little bit of an air gap for you to slide that foreskin into place. So <laughs> it's perfect. The ride height of this diving board with this T2 optic also is perfect ride height because when you're running your CNV DLR, the focus toggle on top of it sits right below the front of the glass. You're not shadowing your field of view through this setup. I do know that there's some people that don't run clip-ons and have a similar LPVO setup like this. Reptila does make a diving board that sits lower on their mounts, which is fantastic for a lot of different optics. And if you are running an LPVO and then you're running a red dot on top or something a little lower witness or has a better field of view than a T2, it makes sense to run something lower. And especially if you're not running a thermal or uh, a night vision module. But right now for this build and what this is set up for, which is a night vision and thermal host, I do have an eye ray uh, on the way for this gun as well. So I wanted the capability to switch between night vision and thermal depending on what I'm hunting, where I'm hunting. But that's a whole nother video. <laughs> so this is the really right stuff Ascent tripod. It's really lightweight. I don't have the weight on <laughs> I did not write down how much it weighs. Google it. I really like it because I can grip all three parts of the tripod at the same time and loosen them in at the same exact time. So it's really easy getting this tripod up, open, and deployed on target. There is flex in this tripod when you're loading it. It's, uh, you know, it's not the most stable tripod. The ball head only gets so tight. So depending on how you set up your firearm, there's no adjustability or there's no adjustment in how tight you can get this ball head. It's a fixed, it's a fixed tightness on this tripod, but you know, it articulates. You can loosen it up down here and get it real loose. It has an open front of the collar. So if you really need to get some elevation changes on it, you can. You can lock it in place. It has resistance, which is nice because you can run it tight and you can actually track moving targets really well, uh, especially like this is a pig gun. So this would be perfect for hitting a herd of pigs with. You have a latch on the backside, which you can raise the elevation of it and get even farther. You have to shoot down the side of a building, law enforcement, military. So it has a lot of articulation. It's super lightweight and really easy to deploy. Um, you know, only issues with it. This is a this is an assembly here. You can see there's a seam here. It's got a little bit of walk to it. I don't like to run it that high because you get a lot more wobble to the whole system. So I typically run it all the way low, depending on what I'm trying to do or how I'm shooting it. But I'll usually squat down behind it and load into it that way. This thing hauls ass, especially inside of 70 yards. You can just stack rounds super quick. One of the other common questions that's going to come up is how much does this gun weigh? Um, I did weigh it with the CNV DLR on it, loaded, and loaded with the CNV DLR, it was 15.8 pounds. It's not super light of a gun, but it's not super heavy of a gun. Uh, it's not like shooting a PRS gun and moving through stages at a PRS match with a 27 pound gun and trying to move it through like a, a cattle gate or something like that. Like it, it is heavy, but it's not that heavy. You know, if you wanted to turn this into like a running gun setup, I mean, all you got to do is get rid of the bipod, get rid of the arc amount and um, put a shorter light on there and a lighter weight, smaller laser device. I mean, it is what it is, but I love it. I think it's a perfect gun for the application that we're putting it into. And 15.1 inch SBR, I mean, this is effective out to 600 yards with good ammo. 
So nothing to, uh, nothing to turn your nose at. Those are all the accessories on the gun. I'm running B5 uh, furniture. This is their SOP mod with the battery compartment storage and their grip. The really cool thing about Type A Rifle Company is they make everything on the gun. They make their own charging handles. They have these nice rounded lobes on the ambidextrous charging handle. So it doesn't snag on things, but it's super easy to, to get to. Large ambidextrous controls. These paddles are huge. This is a bolt release only. It's not a bolt lock, which is totally fine. Bolt release only for something like a special purpose rifle is perfect for what I want. If you're in the prone position and you're feeding with your left hand in the prone, you're feeding your mag, it's in a really easy to articulate position to drop the bolt on the gun. A lot of times these bolt release levers are in really terrible positions, which make them harder to get and release the bolt and come off your grip. You don't have that problem with this setup. Behind my sling here, you can see the nice big square paddles for bolt release, bolt lock, and magazine release here. They have really nice knurling, super easy to get to, and they have enough spring tension so that you don't deliberately drop your magazine when the gun is against your body. So type A, they make their own billet upper and lower receiver sets. They make their own components like charging handles. They make their own triggers. They make their own controls. Their ambidextrous um, safety levers are all in-house. Hand guards are in-house, barrels are in-house the factory muzzle devices that come on these guns, other than this one having an Allen engineering setup, typically all their stuff is done in-house. That's something that's super special about type A. Obviously they're not doing buffer tubes, buffer springs and buffers. Uh, there are plenty of companies that have fantastic production capabilities to produce those. But in terms of all the niche stuff on the weapon system, the bolt carriers, uh, the bolts, type A builds it all. Anyway, with that being said, that's a walk through through this firearm. It is running a superlative arms adjustable gas block. I do have to do a little bit of gas tuning today. So we'll get that in the video and um, we'll show how it's ejecting. It does, because this can is a low flow suppressor, there is a lot of blowback. As you can see, my receiver has a lot of carbon buildup and it's very wet. Obviously that's from combustion. Combustion produces water. Water is what makes that wet, sludgy carbon all over your firearm. So we're gonna be dialing gas in a little bit today. Uh, we are running two types of ammo for the video. We'll be rotating between 55 grain and 73 grain burger uh, gold medal match federal ammo. That's the ammo that I like to run in this gun. That's what I like to shoot long in this gun. One thing to, to note, <laughs> this is a rough steel target 50 yard zero on both aim point and LPVO. I haven't got a chance to get to the to our normal flat range and shoot 100 yards and get a dialed in zero, get my dope, get all my data, and match my zero on the red dot to the LPVO. I haven't had a chance to do that. For the sake of this video, everyone really just wanted to see it run, see how it's configured, hear how quiet it is, and how fast you can get this thing moving. All right, so we're gonna run the 73 grain gold medal match fed uh, at 50, start slow, get some impacts on it. We're gonna start speeding up the cadence of those trigger pulls. And I'm at, I'm at two power. Oh yeah, that's my problematic mag. My OK Industries Surefeed fucking sucks. No, I never get bolt lock on this gun. Uh, might be a little over gassed. It is cycling quite quick. So where is it ejecting? So this ammo is ejecting about three o'clock, four o'clock. This is gassed really nicely for this ammo. Um, it's a little bit spicier with 55 grain, which if we dump one down range, switch over to 55. Uh, more under gas. So I gassed it recently. I was messing with it earlier. I uh, shot it the other day. It was ejecting two o'clock. I did like two more adjustment positions on the gas block. I forgot that I did that. <laughs> it's ejecting where I want it to. It's, it's a little under gassed right now. Could probably open it up a hair because we want that reliability. Holy smokes, that's hot. So let's let's check it with the hot stuff, which is 55 grain.
Yeah, a little over gas wouldn't hurt. Lock back on that one. All right, cool. So we opened it up one position and moved it like three to uh, two o'clock, three o'clock. Got ejection on a sure feed. That sure feed mag was giving me trouble and I forgot to mark which one it was. And that was the one. Um, so gun runs super smooth, super flat. It's gassed perfectly. It's quiet as heck. Like that can is pretty quiet. Do you have a lot of blowback coming out of the firearm? Again, it's a low flow can, but it's a special purpose rifle, perfect for the application that it's built for, which is, is predator and pig hunting. We'll let that can cool and then we'll, we'll run it from the sling. Yeah, that can's like Jesus Christ hot. All right, the A&R design, Shaman. My favorite way to remove the shaman, unbuckle, lift so the flap is loose. With the flap in your hand, use your fingertips to release the Velcro against the body and the belt and slide your medical kit out that way. It's easy to remove it one-handed. The Velcro keeps everything mostly together. You know, if you have to throw this to a buddy, keeps most of the contents where they need to be. It's configured the way we wanted, and it's easy to stow, again, one-handed. Or two-handed for stowing. <laughs> easy removal, one-handed, either left-hand or right-hand removal. A lot of people ask, it's a very common question. I don't know what's asked so much, but if shit hits the fan, what gun are you grabbing? Probably gonna grab this gun. <laughs> this was a gun I'm grabbing. Hopefully I have a better laser device on it. Um, but this gun, night vision compatible with its setup, thermal compatible with my thermal setup. It's got a laser, it's got a light. The light is compatible with like IR illuminators. The gun itself, it's not one of those niche guns like an LMT or a Knights that has a proprietary bolt carrier and barrel face. It's on MCX where if you don't have backup MCX parts and your gun breaks, you're kind of fucked. I can take apart any AR and fix many components on this gun. It's a 15.1, so it's slightly shorter. Yes, in its current configuration, it's a little hefty. I can remove accessories on this firearm to make it lighter if I wanted it to be a little less capable but a little bit more mobile. I have my diving board optic so I can collapse my stock a little bit, maybe run my sling. And if I need to run this a little bit more like CQB setup, I can. I can run it for So, you know, I can run it faster if I need to. You know, I can also shoot it a little bit, you know, I can shoot it a little lower, not have to cheek well, then still dump into something. It's dirty. I haven't cleaned it in probably 1500 rounds and it's dry as a bone. So should probably service it. Again, it's set up to be that end all be all AR where I can do pretty much anything I want with it. You know, you have a bipod, easy, quick deploy bipod, getting into super stable positions. It's a pretty nimble firearm to move around. So if you are having to hop into unconventional shooting positions, you wanna move real quick, get into a point of cover, get an established shooting position, get super stable. 
and send stable rounds down range, you can. Again, it's good to 600 yards, uh, effective range, 600 yards, probably easily push it past that. You can run it a little bit more over the shoulder if you have to shoot from compression. If you have to get it tighter to your body, you got that diving board optic super high. You know, you can go over the shoulder if you need to. For mobility, you know, reloading it, it's a heavier gun. You could rest on your shoulder and do reloads this way. Uh, if you're in a more confined space, you know, moving and shooting, give yourself a little sling length. You know, you can, it's heavy, but you can still easily manipulate the gun. And uh, let's shoot from one power LPVO. So, you know, in its current configuration, it's slightly encumbering, not a big deal. Uh, it does have a very heavy profile barrel. The barrel diameter is actually wider than the gas block. So super heavy, heavy barrel, probably a little overkill for this, but other than that, I mean, super stable to shoot from. You know, you have something like a super lightweight tripod that can go right into the water bottle pocket of a day sack and you have a lot of capabilities in a single, in a single uh, firearm platform. Should this be like an Instagram low ready where everyone starts like here and just lifts it up? Like. A little high. It's a heavy gun. All right, we'll go through the red dot. Let's do it at the 50. Low. So, we want to start talking about more drills that people can run with some of the guns that we're reviewing. In our night's video, we talked about some shorter barreled, easy to, easy to run drills, things that you can do to get your body moving and test yourself behind your gun. With this configuration, you know, this is kind of a Mark 12 hybrid, modern Mark 12, if you want to call it. In this configuration, you really should practice a lot with it. You could build something out like this but really not how to apply it. If you do have the ability to go to a range that has targets between 30, 200 yards, all the way out to 400, and you have the ability to maybe have a starting point to run with your, with your gun, maybe full kit, and have some props set up at the range that you can practice running to, establishing cover, building your position really quickly, and if you don't know what that term is, you'll hear it a lot in precision rifle series and and other uh, shooting sports, but building your position is getting into position, getting your gun hot, deployed, and on target, pressing shots as fast as possible, but building a stable position. Stable meaning as many points of contact as you can commit to behind the gun. So this has a bipod. Maybe, maybe you don't have props at your range, but you do have a, a decent range of targets to shoot at, even paper, whatever. Uh, you can work on accuracy with it and work on wind, but get your data for a gun like this. Get your velocities, get uh, an app like Applied Ballistics and actually print a dope card for your, for your gun. Know how to calibrate it, but just know your holds at those distance. Print your dope card. It's a 5.56 gun, anything within you know, 400 yards other than wind blowing your round. Um, left to right, your elevation is pretty much going to be rock solid if you have established your data for the weapon system. And just run your gun. Run it, test it, learn your holds with your optic, with your reticle, and then set up courses of fire where you're engaging targets from, you know, 30 out to 400. Um, get with some friends, maybe have people call targets so that you know, it's like, all right, you have to run like a relay almost. You run, get on to, on to your, on X, you know, start 30 yards from the starting line, run with your gun and your kit, 
get to that point, maybe it's a prone shot, you know, dump your, dump your bipod, don't pre-set up anything, don't pre-stage, you know, get prone, get your, get your legs set up to the correct elevation, and then see how fast you can get, get rounds down range from running into the prone, getting established and taking the shot. Uh, do, do that same set of drills, but maybe you have a prop like a table or a chair or something. And all right, you're gonna take a shot from the shooting position or the sitting position. And you just gotta rush, get behind the chair, get into the sitting position, either maybe not use bipod, maybe you have a bag, maybe you have a backpack and you wanna practice, you know, maybe you're practicing patrols with your homies and you wanna just throw your bag down and shoot off your backpack. Just set up scenarios where you run get to where you need to shoot from and build that position and take a shot. Maybe do low ready, high ready drills with it in its heaviest configuration and practice getting to your red dot uh, or practice getting and shooting through your LPVO and um, you know, working your LPVO through magnification to take longer shots from standing, kneeling, prone and everything in between. And, and that's how you really learn and work these guns. And then that's how you learn what pieces of kit and what accessories on your firearm work and do not work for you. Again, this is that setup. I think, you know, I love this gun. I think if I was going to, uh, I might swap barrels on this at some point. If I shoot this barrel out, I'll have a slightly uh, skinnier profile barrel installed, make it a, a hair lighter in the front. But outside of that, this thing is absolutely rock solid. Type A makes a really, really nice gun. Just, it's a boutique rifle company making super, super duper high-end firearms. Uh, a lot of people will say, who are that? You, you might not even have heard of Type A, but you know, you're looking at a, a, a gun company that's competing with um, Noveski, uh, I mean LMT at this point, because of the quality control you're seeing out of LMT. Uh, you know, some LMT guys are going to yell at me for that. But again, you know, they make all of their own components in-house, which is really, really cool. And you're supporting a small local business in Michigan. So they make great stuff and their guns are really nice shooters. They're very accurate. They're put together beautifully. There's a lot of attention to detail. Uh, they put tape <laughs> on certain elements of your gun when you receive it just so that if it is in a gun shop or something like that and someone's working the gun, they're not marking it up for the person that might eventually buy it. There's just a lot of attention to detail in Type A's rifles. So definitely check them out. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite guns right now, AR platform firearms, just because it's so utilitarian. It does so much, it's capable of so much. And uh, yeah, I just wanna keep running the hell out of it. Till it breaks, probably should lube it really should honestly probably lose it soon. Anyway, thank you for watching. <laughs>